anytime. This is AIM Agenda. Thanks for your company with me this morning, Ed Husick and Josh Frydenberg. Uh, Josh Frydenberg, I want to ask you about this front page story in the Financial Review. Hockey eyes budget tax hikes. Now, uh, Laura Tingle's story says that the Abbott government plans to raise taxes and charges on May 13 in Joe Hockey's first budget, as well as cut spend, uh, spending as it scrambles to surplus. This would come as a bit of a surprise, it has to be said, given the government made, has made such a big deal out of cutting taxes, i.e. the mining and carbon taxes. Well, you often, as you know, Kieran, get this uh, pre-budget speculation that ends up being very wide of the mark. We are, as you say, the party that cuts taxes. We're committed to abolishing the carbon tax and the mining tax, as well as reducing the company tax rate. We're also committed to a white paper on tax reform because there is a lot that we can do to create a more simpler, fairer and efficient tax system. I mean, in uh, Ed's former Gillard government, uh, they conducted the, uh, the Ken Henry Review and it came up with the fact that in Australia we have 125 taxes, but 115 of those taxes just produce 10% of the revenue. So clearly we are over-taxed and over-governed when it comes to the numbers of taxes, and we do need to take a look at that. But we'll do that in a considered, um, methodical way through a tax white paper, and I but won't some, be responding you know, to yeah. those sort of speculation. Well... Laura Tingle says, is quoting government sources in this article saying there'll be nothing pretty about the revenue, uh, the revenue increases. This would go against a lot of what the, the government has, as I say, has been about in terms of saying you're going to cut taxes if you start lifting uh, charges and taxes in the, in the May budget. It would contradict so much of what you're about, wouldn't it? Well, and that's why we'll stick uh, very much to our commitments at the last election. We do have an obligation to restore um, good health to, to the budget. Uh, it was left in a dreadful order by the previous government, as you know. We gave them a $20 billion budget surplus. They gave us a $30 billion budget deficit. We gave them zero uh, government debt. They've given us $667 billion of accumulated gross debt. Uh, we gave them uh, 250,000 new jobs, they've ended okay. up ad adding on another 200,000 people to the job queues. That's the record well, that we've had to deal with. Ed Husey, Josh, obviously not going to confirm this speculation this morning, but if it is in the context of a, uh, a planned reform as of 2016, would that be fair enough if the government's going to take any subsequent reform to an election? I think the coalition's been caught talking from either corner of the mouth. I mean, before the election, they were telling us that expenditure is not the problem, revenue is, and that, or uh, well, sorry, revenue is not the problem, expenditure is, and now they're looking to actually increase taxes on the other side. Uh, of the election uh, and demonstrating to us that whatever they said before the election uh, cannot be believed because you know, they're clearly going to be breaking a whole bunch of promises and importantly this budget will, re will reveal twisted priorities. I mean they will be cutting pensions and making people pay to go and see the doctor while they're handing millionaires $75,000 in government funding under an exorbitant paid parental leave scheme. Uh, I think uh, it's clear that this government uh, you know, you cannot trust them whatsoever uh, in terms of what they say with respect to what they're intending to do. And what's also extraordinary is that not only have they hidden, for instance, the commission of audit uh, from the Australian public, but now they're hiding it from senior Treasury officials who, it's revealed, have no clue about what's being put there. So, you know, Joe Hockey uh, is hiding a lot of things, drip-feeding others, but at the, at the end of the day can't be believed as to what he's saying. Josh Frydenberg, is it fair to say, this is um, off The Australian this morning, Sid Ma on the front page reporting that tougher pension rules would be likely to be pushed back beyond the next election in order to keep your pre-election commitments. Is that the most likely scenario, that if there are changes to rules around the pensions that you again would take that to the polls in 2016? Look, I'm not going to respond to that sort of idle pre-budget speculation again, other than to say there is a broad debate about the ageing of our population and what that means for the sustainability of our budget. I mean, today, Kieran, 13% of the population in Australia are over the age of 65. That's going to double in the coming decades, and that's going to create a lot of pressure 
on the budget. So we are looking at ways to alleviate that pressure and, and to ensure a sustainable fiscal position. It is also worth pointing out that the Labor government, of which Ed was a part, increased the pension age. Uh, and they, that is kicking in from 2017. Um, that's also a significant decision that they took as a result of the issues related to the sustainability of the budget. So this is a debate that is being had, but I'm not going to respond to the particulars of that sort of idle budget speculation. But what We've ridiculous. only got about 30 what, seconds what, left. What, seriously, Ed, what the, Josh is right there in terms of the reform Labor put in place. In government, you got it, the ageing population. What, what now it seems a change of heart from Labor. What, what hand-wringing that we've had just then, uh, talking about the ageing population, which everyone's known uh, is happening. And what's going to happen is they, as people, as Australians age, they're going to face tougher pension tests that this government never had the decency to say to people they would do when they were going uh, into uh, government. They never warned people that this budget, uh, particularly for older Australians, would cut the pension as we actually increased it and gave people relief in our term in office. They never said that whatsoever. And they've also demonstrated that if they are concerned about uh, cutting government spending, if they are concerned about, as Joe Hockey says, ending the age of entitlement, why are they putting in place, imposing on companies in Australia a $5 billion tax bill okay. to fund a paid parental leave hey, scheme that will see $75,000 75, go, 000, We're out of time. Josh, Ed, thank you for your time. Millionaires. We're cutting the carbon tax for pensions, Ed. Into 50 seconds. We've got to go. <laughs> a quick break on AIM Agenda. Back in just a moment.